Our world is staggered by the video of an African-American man, George Floyd, being choked to death. I was reminded this week that it was God who breathed life, the breath of life, into that first man. And I wondered, what was it like for George Floyd as he lay on that street? With a knee on his neck and cried out, I can't breathe. And the breath of life that God breathed into Adam was cut off from his body. Can you imagine the pain that must have brought to the heart of God as he sees one of his children lying in the street, but the breath of life is leaving his body? Our world is in pain. The pain of protests, agony of injustice, pain as a result of all the looting, economic uncertainty, joblessness, loneliness. Christian hope isn't glib optimism about having my individual wishes fulfilled. It's hope for everybody. Christian hope has its eyes wide open. And so it also grieves. It protests injustice. And it also acts. You know, just as we live, you and I live in a physical ecosystem, we also live in a spiritual ecosystem. Not only can we infect others with a plague or illness or a virus, we can also infect people with courage and joy and hope. What is true of us physically is also true of us spiritually. What is in you will come out of you. That's true physically whether it's a virus or the measles or germs or bad breath, but it's also true spiritually and emotionally. Love and kindness, joy, peace, and hope. In fact, we all know that we have the ability to influence others and we also copy each other in life. You know, students with studious roommates end up studying more, they say. People who live next door to neighbors who garden a lot end up mowing their lawns more often. Everything we think, write, do, and say can and does spread far beyond what we know. Which leads to this question. What do you want to spread in your network of relationships? Here's an idea. May the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope. If we're going to spread hope like a virus, then we have to be filled with hope because what's in us is what will come out of us. If it's negativity, if it's despair, if it's cynicism, it will come out. I love this because God's plan for us is not just to be full of hope, but to overflow You know, to overflow means we don't have enough space to hold something. When our guys were young, one of the games uh, we would play sometimes at the table, much to Gene's dismay, was that uh, one of the guys would start pouring water into a glass, but just at the last second, they would pull it back, and it didn't spill a drop. The glass was not only full, the water actually crowned the top the glass. We loved it. Then of course someone would move the glass and the water would slosh all over the dinner table. God wants to crown our lives like the water crowned that glass so that when we move, hope just sloshes all over everybody. But if we're going to overflow with hope, we can't depend on how others are doing. Here's the plan. May the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope. We don't do this on our own willpower. We don't passively become dependent on people around us or on our circumstances. We have one, someone, who wants to fill us with hope. How? He'll use scripture, thoughts from his word, 
being around other people, being alone, beauty, creation, fishing, whatever is true, right, noble, upright, praiseworthy. My prayer for you and for me is may the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope.